الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Brothers and sisters, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the Qur'an and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to understand them, to accept them in the hearts and to apply them in the life. Ameen thumma ameen. Today, inshallah, we will be talking about the etiquette of a Muslim in the first 10 days of Hajj. Now this is... This topic is, mashallah, related to those people who have not gone for Hajj and Islam has given them the guidance what they are, you know, what they can do and make the best use of these days <coughs> so that, alhamdulillah, they get the reward and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are certain ibadah and worship which are mentioned in related to this month and there are merits and virtues which inshallah uh, regarding the day of Arafah which will be inshallah next Juma, because still we will be having another nine days and eight days for Arafah and nine days for Eid because inshallah without the difference very common sense that today is the first day for the Hujjaj for the pilgrims regardless of our Barilvi brothers accept it or not, or the Eliadis accept it or not, or you know, the Sufis accept it no, or not, or Hanafi, Devandi, we don't care. Alhamdulillah, because this month is the month for the Hujjaj. This month is for the month of the pilgrims. Hujjaj means the pilgrims. And for them, they start today. The first day of Hajj starts for them is today. The maximum difference for us and them will be the hours as we had yesterday. Yesterday when you talk about the day, uh, the timing for Saudi Arabia and timing for UK, it was a difference of few hours, yes? So today, Hajj, first day of Hajj will not make any difference of 24 hours that we don't believe that today is the day of Hajj. It's the same thing, only time, change of hours. Otherwise, it's Hajj for them, Walaikum Asalaamu Wa Rahmatullah, Hajj for them and Hajj for us as well, because the hours can change, but not 24 hours changes, alhamdulillah. And those people who say that sighting is wrong, they will be responsible in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because in other words, they are saying that the starting of the hujjaj, the first day of hajj is wrong. And if the first day of hajj is wrong, then all those millions of Muslims who are going for hajj and performing their hajj, they, their days will be wrong then. 
And if the, their days are wrong, their rituals are wrong. And if the rituals are wrong, then the Hajj is wrong. And I cannot take that responsibility of that fatwa. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> so, and as I said, I'm not Saudi. MashaAllah. Make, may, 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 I, oh, Alhamdulillah, I'm proud to say I'm Muslim first and then I'm Indian. I'm Muslim first, then I'm uh, from Emirat. I'm Muslim first, then I'm from UK. Otherwise, you know, in, his, in the sight of Allah, Allah is not going to judge you because you are Pakistani, Bengali or Indian. Allah is going to judge you whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim. In the sight of Allah, we are all Muslims and the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. So Allah will judge us the same accordingly. So coming back to this point, that inshallah, we will celebrate Eid, inshallah, if Allah gives me life, on Sunday, 9 o'clock, here in this ground, open area, inshallah. Sunday, not this Sunday, the following Sunday, inshallah, 9 o'clock, we will celebrate Eid. Because today is the first day of uh, the month of Hajj for the Hujjaj, and we have to go by that. If we say they are wrong, and today is not the first day, then we have to take that responsibility, which I don't want to take it on my head. So, there are certain things which are rituals for the pil pilgrims, and there are certain things which are for those who have not gone to the Hajj. And as Muslims, my brothers and sisters, Allah SWT has said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ In Surah Al-Hazab, chapter 33, Allah SWT is saying that for those people, for those people who believe in Allah and who believe that one day they will be standing in front of Allah SWT, for them, the role model is only Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the one who performed the hajj. See, I'm getting a promotion. I'm becoming peer sahab now. Alhamdulillah. So when you become peer sahab, you will get so many gifts and this kind of things, mashallah. Zakallah khan bhai. Allah reward you, inshallah. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went for the hajj and that hajj is described in the books of a hadith how the Muslim should be performing his hajj following that, uh, the etiquette of Rasul sallallahu But before going for hajj, one year, minimum one year he got the 10 days of hajj while he was in Medina. So we have to go by that, that how did Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, celebrate his first 10 days of Hajj, the month of Hajj, while he was in Medina and he was not Haji, he was not pilgrim. So let's see what he has said. The hadith which is in Sahil Bukhari, volume 2, and the hadith, uh, the hadith number is uh, five, uh, 457. This hadith says that a Sahabi came to Rasulullah Sallam, and this was reported by Abdullah bin Abbas. And this is, subhanAllah, this, is, this should be the etiquette of every Muslim that whenever you want to know something new of Islam, something new for you, not as Islam as a new thing, but something new that you want to know of Islam, don't go to Sheikh Saab and say, Sheikh Saab, what is your opinion? Always ask Sheikh Saab or any alim what Allah says in the Quran about this matter and what Rasul has said about this matter. Because we are not saying La ilaha illallah Mulvi Rasulullah. Are we saying that? We say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So when we say La ilaha illallah, we have to go back to the Quran. When we say Muhammad Rasulullah, وسلم, we have to go back to the hadith of Rasulullah. So whenever my brothers and sisters, whether I'm your friend, whether I'm like a father figure to you, don't ever come to me and say, Sheikh Sahib, what's your opinion? No, tell me. Ask me, Sheikh Saab, is there any ayah about this subject? Is there any hadith about this subject? And if there is no, then inshallah, I will tell you like a father figure, like a responsible person, I will tell you my opinion that this is what I believe in. But otherwise, this is the hadith, one of the examples. There are thousands of hadith where Rasul was preaching Islam. The Sahaba have asked Rasul that what Allah says, even to Rasul they didn't ask what you are saying. 
Even to Rasul Sallallahu they said that, Ya Rasulullah, which are the best days in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Which are the best deeds in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? So this should be our etiquette. And this is one of the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu reported by Abdullah bin Abbas uh, A Sahabi asked, مَا الْعَمَلُ فِي أَيَّامٍ أَفْضَلُ مِنْهَا فِي هَذِهِ قَالُوا وَلَا الْجِهَادِ قَالَ وَلَا الْجِهَادِ إِلَّا رَجُلٌ خَرَجَ يُخَاطِرُ بِنَفْسِهِ وَمَالِهِ فَلَمْ يَرْجَعْ بِشَيْءٍ When the question was asked, which are the best deeds in the sight of Allah, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, مَا الْعَمَلُ فِي أَيَّامٍ أَفْضَلُ مِنْهَا فِي هَذِهِ The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that any deed that you do, cannot be better than the deeds done in these days. Referring to the first 10 days of the month of Hajj. Referring to the first 10 days of the month of Hajj, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said that these deeds done in these days cannot be compared with any other deeds done in other days. Immediately, Sahaba, they were living for, the, for Allah and they were dying for Allah. Yes or no? They were not living for the dunya, they were not dying for the dunya. Practical example, my cousin, mashallah, when our Prime Minister, may Allah have mercy upon her, she has gone, Prophet Sallallahu has said, never speak bad about those who have gone. So our Prime Minister of Pakistan, Benazir Bhutto, when she was the Prime Minister, my elder cousin, my elder brother, would always say, hum jiyenge to Benazir ke liye, or marenge to benazir ke liye. And this is a slogan for everybody. Everybody who is in the party, they make these slogans, ke hum party ke liye jiyenge hum, party ke liye marenge. And this is shirk. This is shirk. It's not kufr, it's shirk. That Quran says, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَا وَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِ My prayers for Allah. My sacrifices for Allah. My life is for Allah. My death is for Allah. So based on this, when Rasul Sallallahu said to the Sahabi that the best deeds done in these 10 days cannot be compared with another days, immediately a Sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, what about the jihad? We all are living with this intention that Allah will bless us. Shahada and jihad. Today we will come to the Mawlisa. Mawlisa, give me the Taviz. You know how I can make my business better. What time I should read the, you know, the Tahajju so that when I make dua for my business, so it will become better. Sheikh Sahib, my wife is very angry all the time with me. She now even stopped making tea for me. Please give me something so that... But this Sahabi, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you are telling that the, any deed that is done in this, the, these 10 days, cannot be compared with other days. What about the jihad that we do in other months? Rasul said, even jihad, your act of jihad is not comparable with the good deeds that they have done in, you don't do in these 10 days. Allahu Akbar. And he said, yes, the best mujahid, the best mujahid is the one who dies in the path of Allah SWT with his life and with his asset that he took with him. That cannot be compared with anybody, with any deed. So alhamdulillah, now coming back to this point, that what was the urge of the Sahabi? Not the dunya. First of all, the Sahabi was conscious of Allah. Second thing, Sahabi was grateful to Allah that Allah has given the opportunity to live in this world. And he was much concerned about the haji who have gone there and he, we know from the merits and virtues that the reward for the haji is hajj, uh, jannah. Reward for the haji is jannah, no doubt. The Rasul has said that reward for the hajj cannot be compared except jannah. So that is the you know, concern of the sahabi. If they have gone and they get the jannah, what about me, Ya Rasulullah? I'm not able to go for hajj now. So what should I be doing in these 10 days? Then Rasul said this to him. So my brothers and sisters, Wallahi, the, the main point, you must have heard these khutbahs many a time. But my main concern for you people is that appreciate the time that Allah gave you. This is the opportunity. Maybe you may be knowing some of your friends who were alive last year, in the same month, 
they may not be there today. They are not there. So this is because you know, they, they have gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we got the life, we got this opportunity. So the first thing that we have to understand is that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has said to us that do the best as you can in these 10 days and these uh, good deeds done in these 10 days cannot be compared with any other days. There are more specific things that we can do that inshallah I'll quote you from another hadith inshallah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Similar hadith Similar question That يا رسول الله Specify certain things which every one of us, rich and poor, can do. Strong and weak can also do. Man and woman can also do. The young and old can also do. This is Islam. Islam is relevant to elderly people and easy for them. Islam is relevant to these kids, mashallah, the angels, those who are sitting in front of me. Islam is relevant to the average people, young, old, Men, women, rich, poor, strong and weak. And this is the hadith which he says that وعن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما من أيام أعظم عند الله ولا أحب إليه العمل فيهن من من هذه الأيام العشر فأكثر فيهن من التهليل والتكبير والتحميد. Allahu Akbar. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that the greatest deeds in the sight of Allah and the beloved deeds in the sight of Allah, then the deeds done in these 10 days cannot be compared. These are the deeds uh, which are greatest to Allah and uh, beloved to Allah, the deeds that are done in these 10 days. What are that? Specifically, which all for all. As I said, even the person who can't even move his body, he's lying on the bed, paralyzed, but only he can move his mouth. Even for that, this hadith is applicable, subhanAllah. This is how the Islam is. It says that, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ What you have to do? تَحْلِيل مِنَ التَّحْلِيل You just say with your mouth whenever you get the chance. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Then, takbir. And whenever you get the chance, say takbir, Allahu Akbar. Whenever you get the chance, say tahmeed, alhamdulillah. Is it difficult to say la ilaha illallah? Is it difficult to say Allahu Akbar? Is it difficult to say uh, uh, alhamdulillah? No. It doesn't need any efforts. It's only your mind and your mouth. That can be sufficient, alhamdulillah. And this is the minimum that a person can do. Another hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has specified by his practice that Sahaba said that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast the first nine days of Zil Hijjah. The first nine days of Zil Hijjah. So the tenth day is Yomul Eid. So Eid it is not permissible. So Rasul Sallallahu used to fast on the ninth, uh, first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh, eighth, and ninth. These are the days Rasul Sallallahu used to fast. For the people who have gone for Hajj, Arafah is the ninth day, and Eid is the tenth day. For them is uh, Yom Tahlil. For that, for them. So th those, these two days are the Eid for them. So for those people who are performing Hajj and Umrah. And those who have gone for Hajj, they cannot fast in the month uh, on the day of Arafah, and they cannot fast on the day of Eid. For us, we can fast Arafah, but we are not allowed to fast on Eid day, which is the tenth day, and that is Sunday of this uh, in this uh, town, inshallah. Sunday, nine o'clock, inshallah, we will pray Eid. I have to repeat it again. So that Harun Bhai should get confirmed, clear message. And if the uh, Inspire FM is also here, they can also get this information. That inshallah we will be 
praying Eid here on Sunday, 9 o'clock, inshallah. So, with regards to the fasting, these are voluntary fast, not fard. Fard is only month of Ramadan. You can fast all the nine days, you can fast one day, you can fast two days, or you can fast, you know, any number of days to your, you know, ability and if you are able to. There is no restriction and it started from today. It started from today. Even if you are fasting today on Friday, you are not fasting for Friday, you are fasting for the first day of Zil Hijjah because Rasulullah used to fast. So that's the reason you can fast from today. If you can't fast the whole nine days, when you fast for Arafah, Rasulullah has said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sins of this year and the year that year has passed. The minor sins will be forgiven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins. So these are the important issues related to the uh, ibadah that a person can do. Plus, because Rasul has made it general that any good deed that you do in this month, in first 10 days, it is more beloved and the greatest in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to its rewards. So you can fast, you can do sadaqat and zakat, you can, alhamdulillah, do whatever the good things that you are doing and you will get the greatest reward and the most beloved reward in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not only restricted to fasting, the minimum you can say, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, alhamdulillah. And the maximum is to you whatever you do, alhamdulillah. And you can fast. If not all, you can fast at least the day of Arafah. Which is the day of Arafah? Here today in our Luton. Which will be the day of Arafah? Saturday. Alhamdulillah. Are we allowed to fast on Saturday? Ind independently? No. But for Arafah we can. Because we are not fasting Saturday. We are fasting Arafah. Arafah can be on Monday, can be on Tuesday, can be on Wednesday, can be on Friday, can be on any day. Any day. So we are not fasting Saturday, we are fasting the day of Arafah. So day of Arafah, now our calculation, it will be on Saturday. So you can fast without any restriction. Because that day of Arafah is on Saturday for us. us. But generally, normal weeks, normal weeks, you know, the Saturday and Sunday is Eid for the Jews and the Christians. And Rasul has asked us not to copy them so we are not allowed to fast these days we have to enjoy ourselves alhamdulillah or if you even if you want to fast then fast saturday and sunday two days together you can't just independently fast one day but we are not singling out saturday or we are not fasting saturday we are fasting the day of arafah so we can fast this saturday the no, 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 not tomorrow the following saturday because we are not fasting Saturday, we are fasting the day of Arafah. So this is very clear. Now another issue is that takbir, tahleel and tahmid can be from the masjid, from your office, in your car, in any gathering you go, it is the sunnah. The whole 10 days you can do that. And it was known, Hafiz ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi in his book Zadul Ma'ad, he has quoted the narrations from the Sahaba, that from the first day when they see the moon, last night when they, like for example, if they've seen the moon last night, since that time, in their houses, in their masajid, in their tents, in their streets, in their shops, in their markets, everywhere they were busy by saying, La ilaha illallah, or Allahu Akbar, or Alhamdulillah. And that is the minimum a person can do. And as I said, old person can do, young person can do, ill person can do, and a healthy person can do. Black person can do, white person can do. Young can do, old can do. And also, subhanallah, man and woman can also do. So this is no restriction to anybody. Now the f last point is of this month, uh, this 10 days, is the Qurbani. Qurbani is on the 10th day, 11th day, th 12th day, and 13th day. After the Maghrib of 13th day, no Qurbani. But as far as the etiquettes are concerned, Rasul has said to those persons who are interested to, you know, give Qurbani, 
First of all, the ruling of Qurbani. You might be seeing now on television, maybe a month ago you might be seeing people must be bringing so many ahadiths to scare you, to scare you and to force you to give, you know, money for this Qurbani. They say it that it is must. They scare you. If you don't give Qurbani, your business will be, you know, you will have, you know, uh, less barakah in your business. If you don't give Qurbani, your children will get ill. If you don't give Qurbani, somebody will in your family will get ill. You will have this problem. This is superstitious things will be mentioned and they will say, they will scare you. In other words, they will force you and convince you to give Qurbani. This Qurbani is not firm. Try to understand. I'm here to educate you, my brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. This Qurbani is not firm. It is the sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam and it is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and it is just one of the ways for you to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the purpose is to express your, you know, that you are thankful to Allah, great, you are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is again, the main concern behind is that those people who are poor people who, have, who do not have really access to the fresh meat, who do not have the access to the fresh meat to eat or enjoy, for those poor people, you can help them out for this. This is the main purpose of our Qurbani. And it is against the Christianity's faith. Now, Brother Peter will be saying, I made a mistake, I came today. It's a good Friday for all of us. Don't worry, Brother Peter. The Christians believe that according to the Old Testament, Ishaq was the son of Ibrahim who was demanded by Allah to, to be slaughtered in the name of Allah. Then Allah SWT changed it into in the form of ram and the sheep. So that according to their story, it is Ishaq and according to our Quran, it is Ismail. And we say that Allah SWT asked Ibrahim Alaihi to slaughter his son in the name of Allah and that was substituted in the form of sheep which means our Allah, our God does not need the life of any human being and this is the common sense and this is the history and a religious understanding of Judaism and Islam the Christians they differ in this with us they say no this substitution of the sheep is the, you know, foretold information for you to uh, believe that Jesus will be the son of God. Like Ishaq was son of Ibrahim, Jesus was son of God, and he is the purest and sinless. He will give the, his life for the sins of the people. So that's the concept. The concept is clear for us that we slaughter this to make Allah happy and to free us from the sins. That's the concept is correct. But not the human life is in the form of sheep or any qurbani that we do. So this qurbani, the ruling is, is not far. It is not far. It is a highly recommended sunnah if somebody wants to do it. Second thing, it is not far upon even those who are able to do it. Like for example in the house, if there are four men are working, four men, father is working, his son is working, his second son is working, his third son is working. And they all are well off. And when you listen to the people on the TV, they will say all four have to give the Qurbani. They will say all four have to give the Qurbani. Even if the woman, if she is working, they will say the woman also have to, please come close. Yes, please come close. Alhamdulillah. So they will even convince you that even the women who are working, even they have to give the Qurbani. They will also convince you that anybody who has got saving, like a student, some, some students they have their own savings. They will say even the student have to give the Qurbani. My brothers and sisters, you don't have to give the Qurbani. Who says this? I can quote you from the hadith, and there are plenty of ahadith. Rasul Sallallahu said, and last year, I gave the quotation from Arabic. I want to save the time so you can refer to my videos. You can check it. The dalil is that Rasul has used the word man arada an yudahiya and ask any Arab. 
where Rasulullah brings this statement, Man arada an yudahiya. If anybody wants to sacrifice, this is not something everybody has to. No. Are you with me? The word he is here, anybody who wants to. So it's a choice. And from one head of the house is sufficient for all of them. Now, a hadith says that Rasul Sallallahu he sacrificed, he did one qurbani, and he used this word, Hada anni wa an ahli wa an ummati man lam yudahi. He didn't say man lam yastati an yudahiya. The word is different. Yastati and man yudahi, lam yudahi is different. Rasul Sallallahu has said, This is from me. And this is from my ummah, my ahli, my family, and everyone in my ummah who has not done it. He didn't say who cannot do it, who has not done it. These are the Arabic words. Hada anni wa an ahli wa man lam yudahi min ummati. He didn't say wa man lam yastati an yudahiya min an ummati. He said that this is from me, for, from my family, and the one who have not done from my ummah. Which means, one head of the house is sufficient if he mentions, he does the qurbani, and if he says to Allah, Allah, this qurbani is from me and from my family members in my house. That will be sufficient. You understand what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? Yes, so qurbani is not fard, it is highly recommended, and one qurbani is sufficient for all of us. So, well, that's the most part of, Asia. Can you give them the name yeah, of course, yes, and ummati means everyone, even those who have passed away, it, they are included in this an ummati. So, now coming to the sharing of the qurbani, can one uh, can one qurbani be shared by people in their wealth, in the money, like one qurbani, and some uh, more than one people are buying it? Yes. And that is not for the sheep, it's only for cow and camels. Seven people can put their money to buy one cow, or seven people, that's maximum number, okay? It can be even one person can buy one cow and one camel and can slaughter. But if the people cannot afford to, you know, pay for one full qurbani, then cow can be shared by ten, seven people, and camel can be shared by seven people, and they can, that's the maximum seven. Can be two people, one, body, one person can say, I want to do the qurbani of cow, but I cannot buy the whole cow. So other brother will say, okay, no problem, we will share it half and half. So that is, alhamdulillah, seven people can share in the qurbani of the cow, and seven people can share in the qurbani of camels. And it should be slaughtered after the namaz, not before the namaz. When you pray your Eid namaz here, or you have appointed somebody in India and Pakistan, you have to wait, you know, till they have prayed their prayer and the qurban is done. What is scaring the people, especially young people, mashallah, who doesn't want to grow beard, who are very, you know, every day want to look smart, shaving every day. These people are a little bit worried that I want to do qurbani, but the hadith says those who want to go for qurbani, they don't have to touch their mustache or beard for 10 days. They don't even allow, they are not allowed to cut their hair and they are not allowed to cut their nails. So 10 days, I'm a security guard, you know, and if I grow my beard, people will say, you look scary, man. You scared the customers. Oh, my job problem, my this problem, my wife will say, your face is itching, man. I don't want you to. So, my brothers and sisters, Islam is not that difficult. Look, few years ago, I, I met Peter. Peter was completely clean. And now look at him. And I asked him, is your wife objecting you with the beard? He said, no. He said, no. So, this is, there's no problem. Once there is a way, will, there is a way. Alhamdulillah, don't worry about it. And even if you cut your nail or shave your beard or you do this, that is different thing. Your qurbani, inshallah, will be accepted by Allah. Your qurbani, inshallah, will not have any effect on that. This is the etiquette. Rasul wants you to resemble yourself like the pilgrims. When haji is there in the ihram, they can't shave, 
they can trim their hair, they can trim their nails. So, mashallah, to look similar to them, to feel similar like them, to feel that you are sacrificing yourself the way they are doing their activities there. Therefore, that feeling, you to resemble like them, this is what the etiquette is, that when somebody has got the intention, then definitely if you can make it, that's the best. If you can make it, that's the best, which means for 10 days from today, you can't trim your hair, you can't trim your mustache, you can't shave your beard, you can't cut your nails. For 10 days till the namaz is done and the qurbani is done after that. After the qurbani, you can, mashallah, clean yourself the way that the way you like to design and shape with your uh, beard the way you like it. Alhamdulillah. The last year, some brothers were asking me, Sheikh Saab, where do you do your qurbani? I do my qurbani in Pakistan and India on behalf of my parents and my wife's parents. So some brothers, they told me that, Sheikh Saab, we also want to do it. Uh, in India and Pakistan. Indians, they wanted to do it in India and Pakistani. So my brothers, if you are still inter interested in doing that, then I have two genuine people, mashallah, who are assigned in Pakistan, because my family member, and one in Bombay. So if you want, inshallah, your qurbani, if you want to give, and if you have already done and you want to do more, then you can, inshallah, discuss with me after the Juma then I can, inshallah, help you out with that if you are interested in that. So please let me know that because I have, uh, I have already sent my amount. So if you people are interested, you can just let me know, inshallah, and I can guide you with that. If you have any other questions, then I have got all my lectures on YouTube on issues related to the Qurbani, issues related to the first 10 days of the Hijjah. And you can, alhamdulillah, go back to that. Otherwise, you have my phone number, you have my email, alhamdulillah, you can even call me at night disturb me because you are learning deen i'm here to teach you so alhamdulillah we can benefit from each other use me before lose me barakallah fiqh inna allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim inaka hamidu majid allahumma barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim inaka hamidu majid واقم الصلاة إبراهيم قام الدين يوسف من كرتي الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله